Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're doing another Strengths Materials video. This one's going to be covering the concept of strain, which we haven't covered before. Uh, we're going to take it really slow on this first video and go through some definitions and concepts, but we're going to use a problem to this, uh, explain some of these things. So the question's going to go, we have a thin rectangular plate ABCD, which is uniformly deformed uh, into the dashed lines as shown. It's asking us to determine the average normal strain, which is represented by uh, epsilon average of side AB. And we're also asked to determine the average shearing strain, which is represented by gamma XY. I'm going to hop over to another slide here just so we can take a look at some of the definitions we need to cover and some of the concepts that are going to change for these types of problems from previous. So previously, we were actually looking into elements that were considered rigid bodies. So what a rigid body meant was that you could not uh, deform the shape and any forces that we applied to it would actually have no influence uh, on the object being deformed, which pretty much means the elongation or shrinkage uh, of that object. So our mindset is going to be switching from rigid bodies into something called real deformable bodies. And simply put, we have the initial length of the element will not equal the final. Now, important definitions we need to know before hopping in are displacement, which is something we've covered before, which is represented by this delta here, this triangle. Uh, and it pretty much means the movement of a point with respect to a fixed reference system. So if we look down here at the steel rod uh, fixed at one end with an applied force, we can imagine an arbitrary point right in the center of it. And as this force is applied, the final condition of this object is going to be deformed. And where that point of reference ends up as, uh, as the shape deforms, the distance between will be representing your displacement. And we know this from previous, uh, we recall that the di displacement can be a result of translation or rotation as well. But in this case, we're going to be looking at deformation causing this displacement. Now, what is deformation? Deformation is represented by this funny symbol, which funnily enough is actually uh, represented by delta as well, just drawn in a different way. So consider this as the difference and consider this as delta. So delta is going to be the change in dimension with respect to displacement uh, through changes in force or temperature applied to the element. So this deformation here was a result of a force being applied at one end. But there's a bunch of things that can actually cause deformation to happen, which are forces such as shear stress, normal stress, which we've done before, changes in temperature where you have thermal expansion acting as the driving cause uh, to shrink or expand your shape. And you also have concepts which you'll we'll cover later on, such as uh, concrete shrinkage, which pretty much means after you have poured your concrete, there's going to be some water loss uh, from that mix, which is ultimately going to, going to result in a uh, shrunken element. Now, strain, which is the final definition we need to look into, is going to measure that intensity of the deformation. And its units are going to be in deformation per unit length. So what that means is we're going to be taking this uh, deformation and looking at this element uh, with a new final length that it comprises. And the difference between that initial and final length is going to give you that deformation. And if we compare that deformation to the initial length of our element, we will be able to calculate our strain. Now, there's different types of strains that we actually need to look into, such as normal strain and shearing strain, which we've kind of looked into similar concepts previously with normal stress and shear stress. Uh, however, we're going to be looking at normal strain, which is represented by epsilon, as the change in size of an element. So as we apply a force, this elongation will create a normal deformation, which will then result in a calculation, taking that initial length uh, and dividing the deformation to get our average epsilon. What is average epsilon? That means it's the normal strain over the entire body considered. And similarly, we have a shearing strain, which can be represented in this diagram here. And if we look at the deformation with respect to uh, shearing, we would have a change in shape instead of a change in size. So as the deformation occurs, the element shifts going from a square into kind of like this uh, parallelogram, if you will. Uh, and we take the same type of calculation, except now we're considering uh, a different deformation. All right, so that's everything you really need to know 
Uh, another way you can define shearing strain could be the change in angle uh, between the orthogonal lines here, which is going to be used to calculate uh, our shearing strain in our problem. And another important note is that the shearing strain would normally be this angle. And we know that for angles, we have tan theta. However, in this case, we don't really need to consider tan because this angle created here is going to be so minimal that taking this deformation and this initial length is going to be pretty much equivalent uh, to the tan inverse of that same opposite over adjacent. And we're going to see all of this in the problem when we hop into it. So let's start with A. It's asking us for the normal strain epsilon average of side AB. So we have the initial length of side AB, but we are concerned with A prime, B prime, which is the final length of the side. So we know L initial is 200 mil, and L final is currently unknown because we need to determine what that length is. And we'll notice that we actually create uh, sort of a triangular shape between AB and A prime B prime. So what we can do is actually take Pythagoras' theorem to determine A prime B prime. But one thing we need to do before considering this is considering what length this is now that this shape uh, has shifted. We have a one meter or one millimeter deformation with respect to the y-axis, which is going to affect this side of the triangle when analyzing for Pythagoras' theorem. So we can actually draw this triangle here and see what we're dealing with. So now that we have the triangle drawn, we can actually suggest a new length for that side, which is going to be 200 mil subtracting that one, which is compressing the element downwards with respect to this axis. And that is going to equal 199 mil. We can then use this to determine the length of A prime B prime, which is using Pythagoras' theorem, 199 squared plus 2 squared, that length up top. And this is going to equal to 199.01005 millimeters. And we have to be very precise with these numbers because of how uh, minimal the values of strain are going to be. So now we can actually plug into this epsilon average equation or normal strain average. And this is going to equal the deformation created with respect to this direction. So what is that going to be? That's going to be the initial length and the final length being considered. So what do we have? If we had our final length determined as 199.01005, we can take away the initial length to get the deformation. And we're dividing by L initial for this formula. So we're taking 200 as previously mentioned. And we get a final answer for normal strain average equal to negative 0 0.00495. Now let's look to our conventions and see what we need to do with this final answer. Now for normal strain, it's typically written in micro uh, millimeters per millimeter, uh, which pretty much just means we're going to be adding a 10 to the negative 6 to this value. We do this just so that we don't have to write uh, these long drawn out decimal numbers. So if we multiplied this by 10 to the 6, we would actually be given negative 4950 micromillimeters per millimeter. And that would be the final answer for sigma average. Now for the average shearing stress, we have a very similar, uh, similar solving process where we're using an equation that looks the same but it's slightly different because now we want to consider uh, this angle here. And as I mentioned earlier, typically we would consider the tan theta uh, and then use the opposite over the adjacent. But this is approximately equivalent to just saying the angle uh, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So now that that is out of the way, we can then take the opposite over the adjacent, which will be two over the adjacent, which is our L initial, which is 200 mil. 
solving for that, we have 0 0.010 radians. And this theta is equivalent to what we were solving for, which is the average shearing strain xy. So that would be our final answer there. One more note about our conventions here. Since this is a negative value, that means we are going to be compressing the shape. What does compression mean? Compression means it's a negative sign. If it's being elongated, we are going to be considering a positive sign.